Uh, Dolovina, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, I'd like to acknowledge the uh, Banu of Nandi, Banu of Nakovodake, uh, with the Turangani Ebusa, uh, Marami Tokia Naua, and all the other representatives that are here. Uh, it gives me much pleasure to be here this morning. Um, your, your, your chair obviously said uh, quite a lot about the objectives of the company. I would just like to highlight a few points uh, that I think would be uh, relevant for today's uh, opening and indeed the celebration of your acqu acquisition of this particular building. Today in Fiji, 91% of all the land is Itoke land. I remember when I was in high school when history was being taught to us at that point in time, which is a long time ago, of course, in the sort of 70s, 80s, uh, the total amount of Itoke land in Fiji is about 81 to 83%. Today is 91% of all the land. Four and a half percent of the land is freehold, and the other four and a half percent is crown land. Government, of course, recognizes the fact that for a number of decades, actually, since the colonial times, and indeed post-independence, the full realization of the benefits of the ownership of that land, in fact, has not passed on to the Itokia landowners. And for a number of reasons. There are a lot of systemic issues but I think a lot of it is to do with the philosophy as to how people viewed land. A lot of people viewed land because of political reasons that you know, it had to be something that you uh, had to uh, not let go of. Not let go of in the sense that you should not lease it. You should not talk about it. You should not lease it for long periods of time. What actually that, what meant was that they weren't able to realize the true financial benefit from it. The Constitution protects the land ownership. You cannot actually convert Itoke land anymore. Before you could, under the previous constitutions. What happened in Denra, what happened in Momi, you cannot do that anymore under this constitution. What it also does, this constitution, it also says that various land that when it's leased, it must be leased at the market rate. We've been dealing, for example, with the uh, uh, the Fiji Hardwood Corporation uh, land. When those lands were actually leased by the colonial government in the 1940s and 50s, they paid only what we call peppercorn rent. Five shillings, two shillings, that's what it was paid at. Today under the constitution, I see the CEO of TLTB is here, when they lease land, you must get the market rate. You must get the right amount of what the market is offering at that point in time. Now, that is critically important. So, there is a lot of talk about Itaokia landowners being asset rich but cash poor. That, that permutation must change. And as part and parcel of the process, under our Prime Minister's leadership, we now have what we call Itaokia land development funding. We, if any Itauke landowner comes to us and says, I've got this empty block of land, I want to subdivide it. We actually pay for the subdivision. We carry out the subdivision. And at the end of the day, they will actually then lease the land out themselves. And all the benefits come to them directly. Before, as you know, most of the subdivision of Itauke land used to take place by other developers. They would, for example, come and maybe pay $100,000 to a few acres of land, 5, 10, 15 acres of land. They would subdivide it and probably send one lot of land for $100,000. So the landowners actually lost out. So we are now developing this. And in fact, what is really interesting, most of the requests we received are from the Western Division. We've got actually about three in Visese. One is already developed. We have one in Lawaki, one in uh, Warimbitia. One we've got up in Tavua. We've got one up in Nandronga in uh, Yandua. And all of these actually, we are, most of them actually have been developed. So one of the ladies who actually has a land that we've subdivided, in fact, will become a millionaire overnight. We've subdivided for her. We've now made the subdivision climate resilient. We put all the uh, overhead cables underground so nothing gets blown down when there's a cyclone. She'll easily sell those lot, lots for at least $150,000. There's about 30 lots. You do the mathematics. But what I think is critically also important is that the landowners must, uh, must understand when this lady, for example, has now got a, given 99-year leases, she becomes a millionaire overnight. 
when she has those land available for leases, people will come and buy those leases and they will build. When people build, the economy grows. Because when you build a building, you need somebody to dig the foundation. You need somebody to lay the concrete. You need somebody to put the steel. You need somebody to paint the building. You need the plumber, you need the electrician, you need the roofing person. It creates economic activity. It creates jobs, fundamentally. That's what it does. So construction is critically important. Security or tenure is equally important. Just as the Constitution says that the landowners must be paid market rental, it also says that the tenants must also be given security of tenure. You go to a place like Dubai. Many of you heard about Dubai, how wealthy it is. They, don't, they didn't get their money necessarily by oil. Most of the land, we are told about 99% of all the land is indigenous owned. They lease it out. They of course lease land there for long, longer periods like 110, 120 years, even 99 years. But they have security of tenure. It's very easy to lease land, but you have to pay the market rate. You have to pay the market rate. The security of tenure, it's easy process. The landowners say this area is being, going to be leased out, very easy to process it. So you must also view land in that way. If you have security of tenure, tenants will be willing to invest. They will spend money. When they spend money, when construction takes place, it creates jobs for everybody, even members of the landowning unit. It creates jobs for them too. So you, you must understand that the landowners play a very pivotal role in the overall economic well-being of the country. Another point I wanted to make is very interesting. For decades, since the colonial times in Fiji, unfortunately, sometimes even now, when leases are renewed, for agricultural purposes, it's only given for 30 years. Only 30 years. This is why in Fiji, you don't have large-scale farming. This is why in Fiji, still agriculture is very rudimentary, very basic. You don't see large machineries. This is why till today, this tenant of yours, FDB, is the only bank that lends to farmers. ANZ doesn't, Westpac doesn't, Baroda doesn't, BSP doesn't, Home Finance doesn't. They don't, because you have a 30-year lease for agricultural land. If I want to become a dairy farmer and invest $5 million, I won't be able to use, give the land as collateral. But I can give this land as collateral. I can give the, uh, the, the, the land in town as collateral because all, this, all the land here has got 99-year leases. So we, please try and understand that you play a very pivotal role. And your chair mentioned about the communal ownership of land. It is critically important. And I want to be frank too. Communal ownership of land also must ensure that there's proper accountability. We have, for example, when we've seen applications for Itokia land development, we've had two groups of people for the same land, land owning unit coming and making different applications for the same piece of land. So we must avoid that. Let's be frank about it. If you want development for, the, for all the members of the land owning unit, we must, be, we must be honest. The Tala Tala talked about being honest, about ensuring we stick to the fundamental principles of what has been taught to us by the scriptures. Honesty, compassion, love, but transparency is critically important too. And communal ownership of land means that you don't, don't only think about now, but you think about the future generations. That's critically important because that's the beauty about communal ownership of land, that you think about the future generations. In the same way, we think about passing on tradition and culture. Of course, it is evolving but we must ensure that land benefits also pass on to them. Today, as the CEO of TLTB will tell you, with the equal distribution of land lease monies, there are some children under the age of 18 who already have accumulated half a million dollars. Some of them may be a million dollars. What a wonderful start to their adult life. The other point I just wanted to make also, please, we are here to assist through the Ministry of Commerce and Trade and of course through our ministry too, because you have to be very mindful about investments. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. You must spread your risk. 
You know, they say the fundamental principle of being a good investor is that if you invest in a sunglass company, wearing sunglasses, you must also invest in an umbrella company. When it rains, people buy an umbrella. When the sun shines, they buy your sunglasses. You must always mitigate your risk. That's what we as a government have been doing. Our tourism sector, prior to pandemic, we were trying to get visitors not just from Australia and New Zealand, but North America, Europe, Middle East, various other places, Asia. Because if you depend only on one or two countries, if the economy in those countries don't do well, it'll affect you greatly. In the same way, overall within the economy, we are looking at diversifying our economy. In order to diversify our economy, we need to ensure that there's security, there's availability of land, the security of land, Tenwa. And the landowners also benefit from it. Just on Thursday night, I was at the uh, function where we are launching what we call outsource Fiji. There are a lot of people now who are using Fiji as a call center or business processing. It's very interesting. You may call an insurance company, I'm an Australian, I'll call an insurance company to inquire about my insurance claim. A Fijian would be answering the phone call here in Suva. That's what you call outsourcing. Because it's cheaper for them, more efficient for them to actually have somebody in Fiji answering the phone call. They have said within 10 years, there's a potential to create 100,000 jobs in that in that uh, sector for us. If you look at the people who are currently working in that sector, they are between the ages of 19 and 32. Today, over 70% of the population is below the age of 40. So we have to make sure that those of us who are below the age of, well, I'm not, but those of, those of you who are below the age of 40 have security in terms of jobs. Those of us who are over the age of 40, we in the minority. And we have to ensure as the elders that the young people actually benefit from whatever strategic you know, policies we put in place. So overall as a government, that's what we are doing. And we'd like to partner with you. We'd like you to see economic participation as not a party removed from it, but somebody participating in it. Organizations like TLTB, of course, has to reform itself to be responsive to the landowners. They have to be responsive to the investors. They have to be responsive to the tenants. Because security for landowners, security for tenants, you get the formula right, overall economy will benefit. And when the overall economy benefits, everybody's standard of living goes up. As the uh, MC mentioned, that last week I spent three days in Vanuolevu, in very remote places, extremely remote places. They don't even have internet. They don't even have mobile phone connectivity. We are connecting them to that because we want them to participate in that space. So we equally need to understand that sometimes people in the urban areas may also be left out. We have to bring them in. They should not be left on the margins. I'd like to, of course, uh, congratulate um, Divanua Nakovadake for coming up with this initiative. We're here to work with you. We're here to help you. This is, of course, a, a great achievement. We wish you all the success. I think if you stick to the fundamentals, you stick to the fundamentals of accountability, transparency, and having a vision in respect of how you do investments. There are some very good advices around uh, in government, in various statutory organizations please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're here to help you because for us as a government, if you get the right investments, it's an overall economic well-being for everybody. I'd like to congratulate you. I'm also glad that uh, FDB is your uh, anchor tenant too. And uh, we uh, also like to wish all the other people who are here today who are you know, uh, giving the best wishes to you. And I look forward to talking to all of you. Thank you very much.